This is you, this is your family tree, and this is your family tree explained. You have parents, and your parents have parents. These are your grandparents, who also have parents, your great-grandparents. Keep adding parents, keep adding greats. For every G in the name, there is one generation in between you and that person. Grandparents, one G, one generational in-betweener. Great-great-great-grandparents, four Gs, four in-betweeners. Continuing with the basics, you have siblings and so do your parents. These are your aunts and uncles. Up the tree, you may call these people your great aunts and uncles, but your grandparents' siblings are really your grand aunts and uncles. Greats are reserved for the levels above grand. Your great grandparents' siblings are your great grand aunts and uncles. Now down the tree, your siblings' children are your nieces and nephews, collectively nibblings, and you are their aunt or uncle. Their children are your grand nieces and nephews, and you are their grand aunt or uncle. We've gone up and we've gone down and now it's time to go sideways. When you get married, you get everyone's favorite, in-laws. You're on the same level of the family tree as your spouse's siblings. You're a kind of pseudo-sibling. All the new family's relationships to you are the same as to your spouse, but they get the in-law prefix. It's pretty straightforward except for one case. Your spouse's siblings are your siblings-in-law, but are your siblings-in-law's spouses also your siblings-in-law? It's a little unclear. All right, enough with the in-laws, it's on to the reason you're probably watching this video. Cousins. Your aunt and uncle's children are your cousins, but there are many kinds of cousins, and to better understand them, we need to simplify this family tree and think downward. Here's you, your children, and your grandchildren. Your grandchildren are first cousins to each other, and their children, your great-grandchildren, are second cousins to each other, and so on. The cousin number is the same as the G rule. It tells you how many in-betweeners until the connection on the family tree. Fourth cousins, four in-betweeners, and a shared great-great-great-grandparent. According to the rule, your first cousins and you connect at your grandparent. And second cousins share a great-grandparent connection. Just match the cousin number with the number of G's and you're all set. Simple. Side note here, continuing this rule in reverse means that siblings can technically call each other zeroth cousins, which they totally should. And you are your own negative first cousin? Weird. All done here now, nothing more to talk about. Oh right, the once removed thing. You may have noticed these cousins are all on the same level. Removed just describes how many generations apart people are. For example, what's the family connection between these two? Start by taking the smaller cousin number, first cousins, and count the levels apart once removed. These are first cousins twice removed, thrice removed. And these are second cousins once removed. Doing all this on our simplified drawing of your descendants is a bit too easy as most family trees look more like this. The rules are still the same, first cousins, second cousins, and the removed, but it is a bit harder to tell quickly who exactly is your second cousin twice removed or your great grand aunt-in-law. To help, there is a chart you can download which will both make it much easier to figure out what grand nibbling or cousin removed you are to anyone at the next family reunion and obviously show how cool you are. Now we're really done. Unless you start thinking about the math of all of these family members. Just how many great 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 grandparents do you have? 64? And those great ex-grandparents had kids, giving you a whole lot of cousins. This chart happens to stop at 10th cousins, of which you may have more than 2,000? Which seems like way too many, but these numbers both have big, possibly unsettling asterisks attached to them, which we will talk about more in part 2, Family Genetics Explained.